IgA vasculitis, commonly referred to as hanak shanlan purpura. It is characterized by a palpable and petechial purpuric rash that occurs in combination with joint, intestinal, and or kidney disease. IgA vasculitis typically occurs following an upper respiratory tract infection and begins with a low-grade fever and constitutional symptoms. The rash typically begins with pink macula papules or urticaria that blanches with pressure, but later on develops into petechia and palpable purpura. These lesions can enlarge and coalesce into palpable ecchymosis. In these images, take note of the distribution of the petechia and purpura on the buttocks, thigh, and legs. The rash is most commonly located in areas that are gravity-dependent and subject to pressure. The lesion is generally resolved within 10 days, becoming sort of rusty-colored in the process. The joint disease is typically transient, oligoarticular, with a predilection for the hips, knees, and ankles, and non-deforming. Gastrointestinal manifestations may include colicky abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, and hematochesia. Intussusception may occur in children, but it is rare in adults. When intussusception does occur, it is commonly ileal-ileal as opposed to the more common ileal colic location in idiopathic cases. Renal disease commonly results in microscopic hematuria and proteinuria. Other manifestations include hypertension, nephritis, nephrotic syndrome, and renal failure. In children, renal involvement is usually mild and resolves spontaneously. In adults, however, it is generally more severe and persistent. Subcutaneous edema can occur in the extremities, lips, periorbitum, scalp, and scrotum. Diffuse testicular tenderness and scrotal enlargement can be major clues in male patients. Many other less common manifestations can also occur, such as headache, seizures, carditis, and pulmonary hemorrhage. The diagnosis can usually be made based on the history and physical examination. Laboratory findings are commonly abnormal, but otherwise nonspecific. For example, inflammatory markers can be elevated due to an inciting infection, and anemia can occur due to gastrointestinal hemorrhage. The platelet count is typically normal or elevated, which helps rule out other conditions that can present similarly. Nephritis often is not manifest on presentation, and thus the initial urinalysis is commonly normal. If the urinalysis is abnormal, then serum creatine and electrolyte levels should be ordered. The stool should be tested for occult blood, and for patients with intense abdominal pain, ultrasound imaging is indicated to assess for the possibility of intussusception. Biopsy is not usually necessary. However, it may be required for patients with an atypical presentation or severe kidney disease. Mild cases tend to resolve spontaneously and can be managed in the ambulatory setting with supportive treatment, such as rest, hydration, and pain relief. Joint and abdominal pain can be treated with acetaminophen or NSAID such as naproxen if the patient does not have active gastrointestinal bleeding or renal insufficiency. NSAIDs alone do not seem to worsen the papura or increase the risk of gastrointestinal complications in these patients. Follow up with regular blood pressure checks and urinalysis for at least 6 months. Renal function tests should be ordered if any relevant abnormalities are detected. Inform patients that the recurrence of symptoms is relatively common within the first 4 months, and the rash in particular commonly occurs within the first 6 weeks, especially with increased physical activity. Abdominal pain that is severe can be treated with systemic glucocorticoids, which can provide symptom relief, but do not otherwise alter the clinical course of the disease. Glucocorticoids have not been shown to prevent either renal or gastrointestinal complications and thus should not be given prophylactically for that purpose.